Good morning. Uh, let me welcome you to the second day of the presentation of the graduate design candidates. And today there would be three candidates in the morning and four candidates in the afternoon. And we're going to start with the first project. The project that I'm going to present today is the uh, Jula Center. Jula Center project is situated in the heart of Central Business District of Bangkok. Um, if you see in the slide, is the that area. That is the Siam. Uh, this area is called Siam Center. Um, which was built around 1960. Due to the advantage of its location, Siam Square has become one of the most important areas in terms of commercial and ent entertainment activities. To explain it briefly, its area, this site is uh, adjacent to Jurangon University. Um, sorry. Uh, which located that 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 area is uh, Jurangon University uh, in the south side of the of this area. Um, this university uh, is the oldest university in Thailand and also uh, the owner of this premises. Um, This site benefits from uh, proximity to several large projects, such as um, the World Trade Center in the, in the east, and the uh, MBK Center, and um, the National Stadium in the west, around here. People are attracted to this area by the various activity. There are 10 cinema and uh, seven hotel and hundreds of retail shops in Siam Square. Having it, uh, its location near Chulangon University, it is an ideal location for special tutorial school, which is a relatively common practice in Southeast Asia country. This school provides a kind of intensive preparation for high school students who wish to take entrance examination to major university. Um, you see in this area, uh, this is closer. Um, this, a lot of, the, the blue one is a big hotel and uh, the red one is, um, is a big uh, shopping center. Uh, with the rapid growth in Thailand, economic activity in the last 10 years, many circumstances have changed dramatically. The use of the building is no longer suitable for increasing of the land cost. Uh, this is uh, the area of the Siam Square and there are many Retail shop is the uh, is the first floor of all this building. No, sorry. Uh, traffic congestion. 
which is the most serious problem af affect our activity in Bangkok. By now in large hour, if you are traveling by car for 1.6 kilometer, it's take prob it probably take you about an hour. But in the next few years, hopefully, the new mass transit system will be ready for operation. According to the master plan, the new mass transit system, one of the main stations will be situated in the north side of the Siam Square. This will attract even more people to come to this area. Um, sorry, go back. No, not this one. Um, this is the um, this is the line of the new trans new, new mass transportation, and the big station is uh, will be here. It's uh, it's quite near the site. And uh, the original master plan of Siam Square doesn't provide any major public space for this area. By considering this prospect for the of the future development, the public space uh, will become more necessary. And um, another thing, the predestined area as uh, traffic circulation in this area is conceptually chaotic. In particular, the cross circulation between pedestrian and uh, vehicle. If you can see here, the, the red line is a pedestrian way and the blue line is a vehicle way, which is kind of cross between two, two different systems. And, uh, sorry. This is the, this is the road, it's the, down here, it's the, look at this way. This is the hotel, this is the gate here. Yep. This is kind of what I'm talking about, it's about, uh, circulation of the pedestrian and the car and vehicle. <coughs> yep. You, you, you cannot walk through this kind of big car park. And um, the blockage of pedestrian pathway by all the informal sector. This is kind of informal sector that I'm talking about. It's kind of no way you can walk through easily. <laughs> so, as we have seen, our activity are not connected uh, continuously. Um, Jualongkorn University, the client of this project, had decided to develop the entire, the entire area of Siam Square to meet the future requirement of the public. At the first stage, the client wants to alter the using of the road into the walking state in order to group uh, various activity together. As you can see here, uh, now you, 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 the, the car can, can get through this, uh, this area. You can see it in this way. But um, the next stage that Ralongkorn wants to develop this area by if you can see dot line here, this whole area is uh, going to become um, the walking street for the people and not allow the car to get in. And around just one loop on the, on the west, yes, and one loop on the east. And uh, they provide one big, one big, big parking area here and, uh, and the big one uh, behind the uh, big shopping center here. Yep. The, select, the selected site is situated in the middle of, um, I'm sorry. The, the, the next step, the Chulalongkorn want to convert to existing building blocks 
into a new shopping mall and provide space for the new sports center, uh, provide for the Chulalongkorn University staff and the study center for high school students. Um, this is the selected site in the middle. The, the site is uh, 96 meter by 40, 45 meter. It's contained two existing building blocks, one here and one here. Uh, which run along length of the site, each block contains 18 units. Each unit has four stories. At the moment, the ground floor is occupied by retail shop and informal sector. The basement along with the upper floor are used mostly as storage and accommodation. The general condition of these two building blocks is quite old and doesn't function properly. You can see here the condition of the building. Uh, the ground floor is for the retail shop and the upper floor is kind of storage and some of this is uh, for accommodation. Um, furthermore, the facade doesn't give the impression of the activity inside. And the structure of this existing building block is, uh, is a post beam reinforced concrete, which is of wide space used in Thailand. The space between these two blocks is used for a car park. Yep, this is the space between these two buildings. It's used for just the car park. And so continuity of uh, predestined way is literally blocked by this car park space. After study of this circumstance, there are two interesting points which I would like to mention. The access of the site from different direction. You can access to this site from, from, from this way, this way, and this way, this way, and this way, and this way. The main predestine is, the main three for this predestine is this way, is uh, it's this one and also this one. And another thing is uh, that I want to mention, the discontinuity of our activity in the site. In the AA Gladius Style Studio 1994, wireless project has been conceived by the application of new methodology in urban planning and design. Most of the experiments were conducted by the process of two-dimension graphic technique and transformed into spatial architecture, architectural space. For this project, I want to use a new technique which provides an innovation in view of spatial relationship between architecture and its surrounding, including the, relation, the relationship within itself. So I come to this um, proposal. Firstly, by studying the context of this particular area, I decided to, to keep the main structure of this toolbox in order to retain the homogeneity of the whole area. Yep. But for the facade, which I have to main, uh, which I have mentioned before, as not being in a good, in a good condition, the, the transparent cladding has been placed instead to create the mutual relationship between inside and outside. Um, the second, yep. The second, to provide a new public space, I remove our activity on the cloud floor 
not only to make the continuity of space, but also to enhance and to enhance the access and vista of pedestrians from different directions. As you can see here, um, this is kind of you. you I, I left the building of the ground and, and try to make the continuity of, of, of activity or activity to the building. Not only this way, this cross section, this way, but also this way. Secondly, to provide a new public space. Oh, sorry. Um, um, then I insert a new element which I call the tree landscape, which into the project. The tree landscape which flow from the exterior to the interior, and also from the cloud to the upper level will create the flow of activity both horizontally and vertically. Yep, this is the, what I'm saying. The first landscape flow from the north to the south. This is the first landscape flow from the north to the south. And the second landscape flow from the south to the north. This is the section of these two. Um, the first one go, go from the, the north to the south, connecting with the, the existing building block here. And the second one go from the south to the north and connecting with the building in this area. And the third landscape, which come from the outside and connect with the first and the second on the cloud floor and pass through the in-between space from the southeast to the northwest. This is the third one that I'm put into, go from the southeast to the northwest. And, um, and this three uh, landscape is uh, connect together. Thirdly, the new structure in, in the in-between space, which contains sport club and study center, has been created by transformation from two-dimensional diagram to three-dimensional diagram. It is intended to provide the new kind of experience in architectural space. This, uh, this is the two-dimensional diagram, and then I'm tan transformed to three-dimensional three dimensional diagram, and then used as a new structure to put into the, the existing building to provide um, the sport club and study center into the existing building. This is the three-dimensional. This is the image idea that that uh, this new structure flow into this building. That I, I use this image is kind of the concept to to connect with the 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 tree landscape that I'm that I'm that I'm already talking. This is the uh, this is the uh, this is the plan that no not plan it's a diagram that uh, three things go together and the dot line is a is a kind of uh, the existing block building these two here. Lastly, the loaf which has been paid placed upon the main hall and some parts of the outdoor public space, it decided to create the intermediate space between inside and outside. 
the translucent material has been used mainly as to allow the light come to the hall. Um, sorry, that is the section of uh, of a tree landscape and mixing with the with the new structure. Okay, in in this um, in this uh, exnometric. The three thing that I the the three new thing that I put to this project is uh, the landscape here, two landscape here and one here, and the new structure and the loop. And uh, this 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 is the this is the the mall that that um, this is the mall, and this is the sport center. And this is the study center. This is the food center. That everything come together. Um, I want to talking about the nature of this landscape. The landscape that this one and this one. Physically, this this landscape, which contain program in itself, act as first linkage between external and internal, exterior and interior. The first landscape, um, the first landscape came from the outside through the ground and uh, go toward to the first floor here and on the right hand side of the block, uh, the existing block and plus to in the in between, in between space to the second floor. The second, the, the landscape act as um, linkage between itself and ex existing building. At the first floor, some part has become, um, you can see here, flow from here, pass through the ground and, and become the food center on the first floor and then connect with the second floor. The third, linkage between itself and the new program. At the second landscape, go from here to the, to the first floor and connecting with the first landscape here and uh, connect with the, um, and uh, connect with the uh, sport center, no, study center in the in, in this space, they are continue to go together with from this landscape. Uh, the, the dynamic of the space, which creates by each image and its direction, can affect people both uh, phys physically and psychologically. You can you can see here, when, when you look at this, this landscape, you can feel like you can go through this easily and become the part of the building. And actually, um, yep. And the shifting of the landscape also creates small void, which provide the light and the ventilation for the basement. Here kind of shifting from the ground to the first floor is make a small void so you can put like a ventilation uh, or put um, provide the light and the ventilation for the basement which is the car, car park and uh, this uh, this perspective show the the continuity of the space and uh, program. Uh, as you can see, the landscape here pass through here and go to the second floor. And uh, connecting with this landscape here and can, uh, and can connect with this uh, new, new program that, that uh, connect to the existing building. Uh, the continuity of the space you can see in the section. Uh, 
the first section that I'm cut through here, you can see the continuity from the ground floor to the second floor and and to the first floor and connecting with the become the food center here and can go up to to the second floor. Sorry. And uh, this is the section that cut between here. You can see the um, the linkage between it for not only the landscape but also the space itself. Yep. If you look at the uh, intermediate space that I provide here, or the public plaza, this is attempt to create a kind of expansion of the interior space to the surrounding. This area is a, uh, this one is a hall area here, and this one is provided for the public plaza. And um, this, this space can extend to, can extend to the Outside the uh, outside the building, and the volume of the mall is created by enclosure of the existing building and the new diagram. This here, the volume of the hall of the of the mall. And that is a. Uh, that is a side plan. You can see the connection between um, the side and the this this dot line. I I'm undecided to to prepare for the next development that 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 this landscape can can connect with the can continue to the to the surrounding around that area too. This is the oops, sorry. <laughs> this is the section that I cut to here. So you can see the 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 flow of this activity from this to this and uh, this is the section of um, the spot cap on the second floor and the study center on the first floor. And um, under, under here is a parking space. Plan, this is the basement. Uh, this parking contain uh, around 150 parking space and um, and space for service, uh, service facility, such as um, mechanical room, storage, and maintenance. This is the ground floor that um, you can see. Uh, this is the office building. No, no, office, uh, office space. And um, this is the meeting room. Yeah, you can read it. <laughs> and this is the first floor. <coughs> and the second floor, you can see the, this is the top. Right. In the, in the elevation for shopping mall, the idea of transparency has been used to allow the people to see the activity inside. This, this is the mall area. This is. The design of the facade is intended to indicate the differentiate of activity of by using the material and look and shade and shadow. You can see here. This is the. This is the sports cup, and 
under this is the study centers. Uh, the material and the shade and shadow is different from the, the part of the shopping mall here. This, this is the model. Different view. You can see the landscape uh, get into the building. And uh, this is the this is the old feature, and this is the new one that I'm uh, just finished. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, uh, Mirmiran has a question about what, uh, can you say something about the part that you call new structure? Yeah, yeah what, what is it exactly? continue the study uh, from the from the last year that um, the new technique that try to create the new organization of the space and um, this this is kind of um, I, I try to develop this uh, diagram into three dimension and uh, and look at it like uh, the, the the new tool to to create the new organization of the space and another thing is like this project is the is the is the existing building, and uh, and become a more center. It, you know, yeah, the more shopping mall. That that is the same kind of activity in the in the in the in the whole area. So if you want to put something new, I think about why don't I put something else that come from a different different part. I mean dif different. It's a new thing, and and then I, I developed that in terms of uh, how to how to coordinate with the landscape that I create the first, and and work it out in terms of uh, create new kind of organization. That that answer your question. We still don't know what the structure is. It's so what shall I tell Mimiran that it's a new thing? That's it. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's, it's not. It's not very good if you tell him that it's a new thing. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> no, 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 not that. <laughs> I mean, I, I. It can't be that new. Okay. No, no, let me. I'm trying to make my point. Uh -huh, okay. That. It can't be that new if it's from last year, right? Yes, yes, yes. So apparently, to uh, according to certain. Uh, theory, or according to certain theorists, I should say, you should invent it new for this year. Yeah. Not according to me, though, to certain theorists. But you also made that rule last night, right? 
Sort of. <laughs> um, because I, I, I was thinking about how to put the new program, uh, which is the, the for center and the study center. Can you just name that part or do you have like what is the new structure of the new program? He doesn't mean uh, tectonic stuff. You mean new organizational structure. structure. Yeah. Or organizational yeah. structure. It's not about how the building is held up in a new way. It's, it's about I the sense it's spatial structure. I know a couple of things about yeah, exactly. spatial <laughs> But what does it do between the two landscapes? Uh, it's connecting with the Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see here, this is this is part of the I, I call the new structure, which and I don't know what 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 I choose the name of this. But it's uh, it connect with the with, with the with the first and second landscape, and um, it's kind of I want to provide a new structure to to to, to make o new organization to to I mean to introduce uh, the new program that put into the building. But you talk about new structure. No, no, no. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> this, 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 this. Oh, you're getting wise, huh? <laughs> this, this, this span of, 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 of each column is, is the, is the old, it's the old structure. Line, but they're all like that. Yeah. I can't believe it's regular like that either. Really? <laughs> because in, in Thailand, they just, you know. <laughs> this, this, this structure is the, the old structure I'll of the. It's about 30 th uh, by 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters, yeah. yeah. So you've just drawn them to look like the Lozi. They actually are quite big. Yeah. So it's a kind of trick of grass. <laughs> 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 it's an important thing in architecture. It's not big. Really. It's a meter. 30 centimeters. 30. 30 centimeters. Oh, 30 centimeters. Centimeters. One of the things that is, um, no, I should speak much more. I mean, one of the things that I think is is not you 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 know you you explained the whole question of the site and the relationship to the parking. That I think was wonderful. It came across very well. I think the thing that's not very clear is in terms of the difference between the existing spatial structures and the new ones. Where, for example, in in terms of the street and the site and the way the shops are used and so on and so forth, whether the kind of intervention that you make also suggests a slightly different urbanism at the level of, of the city itself rather than the single building. Because mm -hmm. you, are, you have yeah. only offices, for example, which don't seem to be that public on the ground floor. So the whole concept of the, of the ground floor and the way that there is this move from the street into the, to the building, that's the one area where I don't quite understand what your attitude is towards the public space of the project. One understands that there are public functions, but one doesn't understand quite how the street with the shops and so on, which can be led by relatively small scale operators, now are transformed in the context of your your project. Mm. Uh, the, the point that you make 
it, uh, because it suggests in some sense that this is now a kind of hall again, a kind of totality that comes to the site. Mm -hmm. It's a single operator, whereas for example, the existing urban condition, there are small scale shops. There is a possibility that the city yeah. could have a multiplicity of ownerships. So what I'm asking is who owns this project? How is this, the ownership of this thing as a whole relate yeah. to the, 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 the way it, it actually becomes part of the city? Um, the, the owner is the Israel Rubai University that I'm, that I'm showing you. It's the, the, the office in the, in the car for that, that is the office for the staff to, to, to operate this project. And the, yeah, and, and the shop in the, in the shopping mall is the, hardly from the, from the, from the car for that you, you move out and then put them in the in the in the shopping mall there. So the public space is the mall. Yeah. So basically it's a university facility with a study center and a sports club and a shopping mall to integrate the street public and, and you bring them up in sections. Instead of being street public on the ground floor, institution on top, you, you move both institution and public into the section. So it's a, yeah. in a certain sense it's a mannerist development of It's, it's, a, it's a version of a mega structure of some sort, but I think that the point that I'm trying to make is that when you make this kind of, inter because we, we have, there has been obviously a lot of uh, interest in this kind of spatial, uh, spatial structure for a while, so it's not a new thing. Mm -hmm. But when you bring this type of spatial structure into the kinds of city that you have, I think it would be still interesting to find out or to discuss the repercussions of this kind of grafting onto the site. It's not that you can talk about the newness of the thing, but I think the newness of the thing in relation to a certain set of existing conditions. And this is part of the project that I think, <coughs> not, not just you, I think many, many people who've talked about the whole question of globalization, for example, and the kinds of uh, you know, intense new programs, for example, for whether it's for Thailand or for uh, Kuala Lumpur and so on, it's still not clear the relationship to the existing conditions. Um, because it's, it's, it could be read as a kind of capitalist intervention, in a sense, at that kind of level. Yeah, so the relationship of those... Oh, okay. it's just a kind of colonialism. However, when you look at the city landscape you showed us, it's pointless to identify one more bit of colonialism when the entirety of, Bang of Bangkok has been erased. No hotel, all the entire landscape has been... Absolutely. I very much in, in agreement. But I think it still doesn't excuse the project of colonialism, which I think is at the root of a lot of you know, contemporary interest in, in building projects in that part of the world. So I think in this, in this kind of context where it's a, where it's a studio. We're bringing people a, over from there here to study in London already participate uh, in that. Right? Not necessarily. I don't think that that, that necessarily s suggests that there is, there, is, there is that part of it because part of what we could be doing is to simply sure. open up that kind of conversation and suggest that there might be uh, sort of alternative strategies to, to, sure. to those of uh, colonialism. There is an institutional complicity which it, it can decide to thematize or exactly. oppose. Exactly, but I think as part of the project, this is what, what I would say is, I mean, related to Hadi's question about what is it new about the spatial structure and what, how, what does that newness do to the city itself? How does it, uh, and this, this, this didn't really come through in the, in the presentation, I think it would be worth developing. Maybe not now, but at some point. من فکر میکنم من از چیزی به نظرم اومد که در این پروژه در واقع با این که این شکلی که به طور نوم یا این رو خیلی مسیح میگرفتن در پروژه و اینجا رو خیلی شفاف میگرفتن که یه رابطه با اون شکل قبلی که پروژه داشته این ساختمون داشته داشته باشه. Yes, uh, Mirna thinks that uh, you could have had a more clear project if this you and then the so-called new structure as a sort of a single element which is different than you uh, would become you know, very clear so that you would have sort of two things. Uh, you know, uh, very clearly. 
he thinks they're like, you know, they're, 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 they're the two landscapes and the new structures are somewhat confused formally in the project. Yeah, I mean, the, the question of the transparency is, is very important because what you're proposing for the exterior is the same uh, thing that happened to uh, this project that, that Tom Main did in Los Angeles, which was a renovation of like a seven or eight story building that was um, built not, not very uh, perfectly and not ideally. And then he just put a kind of transparent skin around it. And uh, underneath the regular grid of the skin, there would be some sort of massive columns and floor slabs in some places and irregular spacing of columns, et cetera. And, and, and you make it seem instead especially when you see those perspectives, that it's cut of a single sort of universal kind of modernist cloth. Um, but it, it, if I was to think of a diagram of the project, a kind of urban diagram of it, I think what would that diagram be? Or I look at the situation of it in terms of that block and from what I could understand in terms of the university and the other thing. And this is a project that is dead center within that. Center, right? This line yeah, here yeah, yeah. is not only the, the center of this block, but these two blocks are symmetrical. The blocks yeah. around them are symmetrical, yeah. and there's quite a bit of yeah. symmetry going on yeah. from that, right? <laughs> so you have this situation that's, that's dead center in there. Between the two blocks, if I don't look at the particularities of the, the, uh, uh, the, the thing you're calling the new structure, uh, it works like a kind of public scale ramp, scissor ramp, right? Yeah. That is symmetrical. Well, yeah, pretty yeah, much symmetrical. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not talking about the particularities of yeah, where yeah. the curve going like this and like that. So in the middle of the block, you've taken the street and you've brought it up into a sort of semi, from, a, from an open public space into a semi-public space uh, with s large symmetrical elements, right? I mean, almost, I mean, you can think of like the, the, the Paris Opera or something. I mean, it's not, it's not a, a, a fundamentally different diagram than that. So I don't know from that what is the what is the relationship between that and the things you're calling a new structure, which which seem to imply something that is uh, has has different urban qualities. I mean, symmetry isn't isn't the first word yeah. that that comes to mind with that. We have to okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you can you. answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Anna Klingman. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all my friends for helping on the model building. And I also want to express my gratitude to Yasu Santo and Andrew Yao, both of which were of invaluable assistance with the computer work that was necessary to finalize this project. Um, the location of the project is in New York. Um, I have to say that this is a project about Manhattan. Um, um, here you can see the site uh, from the water. Um, the site is located on the west side of Manhattan between 59th Street and 72nd Street. It's about one and a half uh, kilometers long and um, average 500 meters deep. Name of the project is Riverside South, currently being developed and owned by Donald Trump with SOM as the architect. Um, basically, it's a mixed use development incorporating residential and commercial uses, office space, 
uh, multi-level public underground parking, a huge TV production complex and a 21.5 acre waterfront park for the city in exchange for the development. Um, <coughs> this waterfront park is to take part in the city's comprehensive waterfront plan, which seeks to redevelop all of Manhattan's waterfront, uh, which started to deteriorate severely in the 50s and 60s, when containerization in the shipping industry replaced brake bulk shipping, and intercontinental air <coughs> travel became cheaper than ship travel. Um, Originally, the site accommodated the 60th Street rail yards, which were at the center of the Penn Central's freight operations for Manhattan and the Bronx, but the decline in railroad freight and the bankruptcy of the Penn Central Railroad in 1976 resulted in the closing of the yards. A number of redevelopment proposals were made since. Um, the site is surrounded by three uh, very distinct neighborhoods. On the left, the Upper West Side with its coherent grid system and maintained street fronts of mid-rise apartment buildings. Um, on the right, the Lincoln and Columbus area where super blocks with high-rise towers and open parks uh, dominate or contradict the integrity of the grid. Um, on the left is not very readable, uh, the Clinton area, which is uh, basically characterized by nondescript generic low-rise blocks, and on the right is uh, Riverside Park, which is just above the site limits. Um, the most prominent site conditions um, are, first of all, the raised uh, Miller Highway, which is approximately 20 meters above ground. Um, the Amtrak rail tracks, uh, the only passenger train still passing through the site. And on the right, you see a slide of the um, high retaining wall. It's about also 20 meters high, separating the site from its immediate context. And um, dilapidated pier structures still remaining on the site. Um, design objective and experiment in the development of new concepts and techniques for contextualism, an urban project that could be understood as absolutely continuous with its context while having a distinctly new identity. Um, <coughs> this is to be done by turning the indigenous information of its context into an alien novelty. Words are heavily borrowed from Greg Lynn. Um, in order to achieve that objective, I um, divided the project into four different parts, three different projects, and um, the park as a conclusion. Okay, project one, um, the zoning of public voids. Um, I started out with an analysis of solid and void structure around the site. Um, the interesting thing is that you have a disintegration of the 19th century uh, block structure where the Corbusian post-war development of um, high-rise tower in the park type situation takes over, instigating a completely different relationship to the city's grid. So the site is kind of here, and then this is sort of the reversal of solid and void structure Um, the city grid on the right um, itself generates the primary void structure with its crossroads, avenues, <coughs> and big diagonals. An intensified version of the city's grid is brought to the site, resulting in a duplication of void space. Um, an, an analysis of the solid and void reversal in and around the site um, results in a preliminary spatial organization of the site, um, which is the graft. Um, if the project is to be understood as an experiment of new techniques for contextualism, two strategies immediately come to mind. 
The first strategy involves the explosion of fixed typologies into what we might call a swarm of urban bits, um, a complete dispersal, and the second is a smoothing strategy that might integrate an intensified compressed version of those types into a continuous plane. Um, I took the dilemma inherent in these seemingly contradictory strategies as the generator or the catalyst of the project. Um, the first step, therefore, is to identify these types that have created Manhattan. Um, on the left, um, the sunken plaza or subversion of the ground plane. On the right, uh, the perimeter block or consistent uh, street wall situation. On the left, the big object or the negation of the grid. And finally, on the right, the tower, multiplication of the ground plane and uh, multiplication of towers. Um, so the intention of the project is to partially maintain but also partially subvert the meaning of these types. Uh, to develop the idea of solid and void reversal further, I started out with the maximization of each type on the site, uh, which then devolved into solid types or defined types and void or defining types, uh, diagram on the right. Secondly, each type is devolved into planimetric graphs according to their respective solid and void characteristics, reinstating the variation of solid and void inherent in the context. So you have the sunken plaza, which I defined as the explosion of voids, uh, the big objects um, as the reversal and implosion of solids. <coughs> the perimeter block, a linear field of solid and void reversals, and finally the towers, a point grid reversal of solid and voids. Um, this is the project's uh, program. It's very brief, really reduced to um, square footage requirements. No other restrictions or preferences other than meeting the square footage uh, requirements specified. Um, so I dealt with the program distribution in the same, in quote, rational manner, allocating what I considered appropriate percentages of program to each type to achieve a heterogeneous distribution of program on the site. Um, so each program is happening in each type, however, to different uh, percentages. Um, so this is a planimetric diagram showing the program distribution in the sunken plaza. On the right, you have the sectional distribution. So each type is still uh, dominated by one single, in quote, expected uh, program. Um, for example, the tower and the block are still dominated by uh, the dwelling requirements. The big objects are dominated by the use of the TV production and the underground plaza still access the majority of the parking. Um, but to the extent possible, each type is also subverted by all other programs. Um, this again is a diagram that illustrates the three-dimensional uh, program distribution. <coughs> oh, shit, the slides are out of time. Uh, it's one on the right. I don't know. Before Somehow, I mean, this this should have been by itself, <laughs> and this is next. So what should I do? Back up the one on the left. The one on the left. Which is left? This. I don't know. They have to go together. Oh, fuck. I was so afraid of this. <laughs> I hate this. Why? That's why I wanted to. See this? You want this one? It matters. Anna, Anna, you want this one? You want this one? You want this one or another one? No, before. The one before it. Der Park, this der one. sollte alleine sein. Und dann kommt jetzt Which? das mit dem... Oh, kommt das, das jetzt vorher oder nachher? Vorher. Das ist ein Kotzen, echt. Let's see. What is to this here? 
Oder das bleibt allein, aber vorher muss noch ein Slide. Mach okay. das vorher bitte. Das hier? Nein, der Noch Park. davor? Auch auf der anderen Scheiße, Seite? Ich weiß es nicht. Okay, Park. Bis. Und Die dann Wolf. was kommt jetzt nächstes? Nee, geht's. Ah oh, ja, okay. All right. Shit. How do I go back and say? Fine, thanks. <laughs> um, program distribution. Um, the park always remains as a constant, thereby defining the program area distribution of all other programs on the site. Yeah. Um, the sectional organization um, of the project evolved from a close analysis of the New York City zoning law, starting out with a zoning diagram for high-rise construction. Um, the zones are broken up <coughs> into low-rise, mid-rise, transition and tower zones with setback regulations, bulk, FAI, etc. From those regulations then evolves either a context-orientated bulk building distribution where low, mid, and high-rise buildings relate to the respective portions of the context, or a non-contextual zoning diagram that I generated from those regulations where the FAR is simply inversely proportionate to the height restrictions. From the latter diagram, I evolved zoning sections respective to each type. two of which remain at constant height, uh, the block and the big object. The plaza, which increases in depth from water to land side, and the towers, which rise to the highest point in the center of the site before they step down towards the river. These conditions generate a preliminary sectional distribution of types on the site. If according to Kohlhaas, Manhattan's grid serves as a two-dimensional disciplinary device generating archipelagos of three-dimensional anarchy, the objective here is to dissolve the grid into a continuous urban field. While we may fear that a field eradicates genu genuine particularity by producing tiresome repetitions of equal yet meaningless entities, the objective in this project is to create a truly dynamic field a molecular grid that produces unexpected local affiliations through continuous change of scale and density. Um, the premise, uh, the grid is the generator. On the left, um, an image of Manhattan's grid, where the grid in a very formal manner defines each building block, also forming a dialectical relationship with Central Park, where the park is simply the inverse condition of its built surrounding. Um, a free organization within defined limits. Um, the question is what would happen if you suddenly invert the relationship between park and grid to the extent where the park actually becomes a grid that actively engages with its built surrounding, which is now a free organization of building types or graft. Um, this question became generative for the organization of the site. In terms of the project site, this means first of all a gradual dissolution of the city grid in favor of the free organization of building types, only to be reinstated as an intensified version of the grid in the park. So an interaction between the two takes place where the city's grid is initially accepted as an organization onto the site, only to be shifted, eliminated or multiplied by a flexible grid of the park reacting to um, local conditions on the site to achieve a non-hierarchical relationship between grid and buildings, where the grid um, structures the free organization and vice versa. Um, so you can see the central park condition above, a sort of hard edge condition where context and park are clearly separated and um, a flexible edge condition of the park below, 
where the edge is clearly defined, but at the same time not absolute, where the park uh, reaches out and the free organization of buildings is allowed to intrude. <clears throat> Since the grid is most at its most intense in the park, the park achieves a maximum of flexibility. As the densest version of the grid, it becomes the generator of the project programmatically and spatially, as opposed to um, merely formally. Um, which brings us to the park. Um, avoid mega structure of high intensity. The park is organized into a multiple of zones. Um, starting out from an equal division of public and private zones to maintain a balance between public activity and more privately financed activities. According to this initial organization and added micro conditions, the following zones were developed. Um, community activity, sports, water, children, green, um, etc. The void zones being zones with flexible programming to be programmed by the people who utilize them. Um, each, on the, on the right, each programmatic strip then devolves into a multitude of activities which creates unexpected overlaps and uh, adjacency. Kind of cross programming. Um, the programming actually shifts within a 24-hour cycle, accentuating the overlaps of different programs which are activated at different day or night times for different periods of time. Zones of use intensity are created which shift throughout the day to different locations of the park to achieve a sort of blinking effect. From this internal zoning, the park as the program generator extends the program onto the program surface. Again, the major zones are divided into public and private sectors overlapped with extensions of the park's program. So you have um, information zones extending which are related to cultural activity, um, commercial zones, green and water zones. Uh, which really represent open green space and void zones. As the locale of the highest programmatic intensity, the park restructures the free organization of building types uh, with programmatic zones characterized by varying degrees of decontrol. As programmatic extensions of the park, these zones generate, deform, and in some cases even eliminate the built environment. Um, they also, of course, activate the context beyond the site limits. Um, in case of the sunken plaza, the green and void zones are generative for this building type to happen, meaning that wherever these zones are, the concentration of that particular building type is highest and a dispersal takes place from there. In case of the big objects, the zones are also generative. The big object positions itself where commercial and cultural zones appear together in order to create a certain intensity necessary for the existence of such a big building. Um, the next two types are more about displacement or deformation. The block type deforms adjacent to commercial, green and cultural zones. So if it is situated adjacent to a green zone, it starts to deform laterally. If it's situated uh, next to a commercial or cultural zone, it would deform vertically to accommodate more activity. 
uh, so it kind of shifts as a linear field. Um, the tower as a type remains largely unaffected, only forms minor concentration points around commercial and cultural activity zones and is the only type uh, which can intrude into the green zones. Uh, circulation system. Uh, finally follows respecting partially the micro conditions set by the building types, following partially the zoning itself, and finally also tying, the ex <coughs> tying into the existing circulation of the context. So the circulation system ties partially into the existing road system, partially introduces new roads in order to force new connections from site to context. Um, so you have the east-west crossroad circulation on the left, bicycle and pedestrian. And on the right, um, a breakdown of um, the north-south circulation um, avenues, starting from the bottom with a kind of boardwalk tying into the existing waterfront pass, um, above a park promenade, and the dotted lines representing the uh, inner park circulation. And the white uh, is the main circulation spine of the site and tying into a riverside drive. And on the top is a secondary road tying into East 66th Street. These are the slides of um, the project. <coughs> on the slide on the left, um, I think you can see the smooth transition uh, from the project uh, to the context, reinstating the solid and void reversal already happening in the context. Uh, you can also detect it within the site, a gradual change from solid and void. It also shows uh, the three distinct surrounding neighborhoods clearly on the top, um, the upper west side with its closed uh, perimeter blocks. Uh, in the center, the Lincoln area with uh, towers in the park and uh, the big flat buildings starting on the lower right hand side. Uh, so the project kind of um, plays or relates to the disintegration of the grid um, already inherent in the post-war construction and goes even further with the use of its uh, graft, but then reintegrates itself um, with the use of um, the intensified grid of the park. Um, you can also see, um, is that a pointer or something? Uh, you can also see the disintegration of the closed per perimeter blocks Um, the project basically uh, consists of a warped surface following <coughs> the line of the context. makes a smooth transition to um, zero level on the piers. Um, you can identify uh, the different types, kind of the black stuff being the towers, uh, gradually descending towards the river where they are almost at the same height as the um, blocks. Um, you can see the plaza voids. which um, partially act as extensions of the green zones, um, as sort of recreational spaces, and 
partially also give access to the box below, which houses most of the um, parking facilities, um, shopping, etc. Um, the two big objects uh, being positioned here, housing most of the TV production complex. Somehow the light. Oh, yeah, here. Um, also, you get a view of the. Um, the highway cutting through the high rises. Um, again, you can see the park um, cutting through in the center, the blocks. Um, transgressing the park boundaries and um, also the types kind of affecting each other, interacting in a sort of detached intercourse. The slide on the right can give you an impression how the linear block structure deforms according to its uh, specific adjacencies, um, either becoming higher or flatter. Uh, these are some detailed photographs, I mean, detailed impression of the, the park. Uh, with roads crossing and closed community spaces, sports, uh, lakes, whatever, adjacent. Uh, video galleries or restaurants kind of crossing um, lakes. Um, reinforcing the blinking effect of shifting intensity. So even though the park seems to be loaded with stuff, um, since it's not activated at the same time, uh, the park is able to maintain its identity as a park, uh, really a void structure. Um, these are some photographs of the model showing the park and <coughs> the river. On the right, uh, you can get an impression of the different building types. Uh, the, the plaza voids, um, park and influences, <coughs> uh, influences and um, the park connecting to the river. That's it. just start with uh, um, a basic question. You were making, a, um, you referred to a statement of uh, rents. Yes. And uh, I think somewhere else also in uh, discussing Manhattan, he's referred to the way in which the grid itself becomes, in a sense, a kind of liberative project yes. because within the order of the grid, there is the kind of freedom of doing many things. Yes. And, um, if we keep that in, bear that in mind, and then uh, think about the, uh, your last statement where you were talking about this is an architecture 
Um, this is not an architecture of originality. It deals with reuse and so on and so forth. Um, I wonder, though, uh, whether uh, because of the, the fact that uh, now there is a kind of uh, this, this, uh, this sort of urban naturalism, which is part of the, the way of thinking of the project, whether you don't think that you end up in with a sort of total new project. The elements might not be new, yeah. but in fact, it doesn't it refer them to the notion of the master plan and the, the, the plan as a sort of totality becomes a new invention. Yeah. So how do you, basically what I'm asking is, how do you see the idea of the, the totality of the project in relation to the discussion of the grid as something which, in, through its anonymity in some sense, allows for a liberative project. How do you pose your project in relation to the grid? Such a long question. No, it's a very simple question. Really? How, does, how is the project very different than the grid? <laughs> <laughs> I try to cut it short. Um, I mean, first of all, the, the, the project um, was about uh, maintaining typologies <coughs> but also subverting uh, the same idea. Um, the same approach was really used for the grid, that you identified uh, what the grid uh, for Manhattan does, and also trying to kind of subvert it. I mean, trying to invent a different grid that is not merely a formal structure. Um, so that the grid really becomes interactive, that building types and grid are no longer separable entities, but where the, the, the grid, as a matter of scale, becomes so small that it permeates all of the urban fabric at the same time. So the buildings are completely conditioned by the grid, but at the same time completely liberated. So building and grid form a kind of um, symbiosis where one influences the other constantly in a constant um, <coughs> active engagement with one another. I have, first of all, just a question, just for information. Um, I understood how when program meets uh, the subverted type, they become plastic. What I don't understand is when you have type overlap. For example, in several instances, you have big object overlap with sunken gardens. Mm -hmm and they both are crossed by two different programs, and you didn't really describe those kinds of hybrid conditions. So could you just elaborate that for me? What do you mean, like the formal? Well, no, I mean formal interaction or programmatic interaction? Both. You talked about how the, a formal type, for example, the, uh, the uh, block was able to get bigger or littler depending on, it, on the particular uh, programmatic condition yeah. it met. And you also talk about how, for example, towers are the only thing that are able to maintain their status as point objects in the garden in the garden to maintain the spatial type of the point garden. What you don't talk about, though, is you have some instances where you have big object, over, I mean, there were several cases, but one that's obvious is big object simultaneously containing sunken plaza with a pro two programs passing through. And so I never got it, it was never clear to me how the two subverted types, when they meet, will react to each other. They don't. So they're That's both what I meant with sort of detached intercourse. It just happens and nothing comes of it. So there's so a the sunken garden in the middle of a big object? Yes. Okay. So they just simultaneously yes. exist. Okay, the, then the question I have is your ambition, your stated ambition for the project was uh, to produce using the indigenous properties that are perhaps recessive in a given condition <coughs> to use those to generate something which is uh, an alien novelty. Now, I see the novelty, I mean, there are quite a few novel conditions. You have buildings and streets floating in ponds. I mean, one can see a quite a bit of novelty which comes from redeploying the semiotic structure, let's say, of New York but I don't see the alien condition. <laughs> in fact, it seems to me entirely belongs to a project of novelty through semiotic remanipulation. And I don't think, that's not a criticism, 
But I think that's a distinct kind of project from trying to find the, the possibility of an alien condition within an existing condition. So if you would just respond to what you believe is alien, not just novel. Um, I would say really it, it's alien um, in terms of the subversion of the types, that they're sort of retained, but at the same time, in a sense, uh, subverted. In what sense? Um, <coughs> first of all, in um, the programmatic sense, that, that it's not clear, I mean, that you have office towers and residential towers, but that also each program happens in each type, um, that they deform according to certain contextual influences, and also um, by the use of uh, the free organization or the, the graft. So it kind of relates to the context because the, gen the, the, the graft kind of um, uses the spatial organization of the context, but at the same time um, completely destroys it as well. well then, I'm just one more follow-up question. Um, the Downtown Athletic Club is right next door to the um, World Trade Center and Vista Hotel Complex. Inside the Downtown Athletic Club are restaurants, hotels, and sports facilities. Right next door is the World Trade Center, which also has offices, restaurants, sports facilities, and an athletic club. Uh, so it's two different tower types, both, both already multiply cross-programmed. So we all know Rem's attention to one, but, we, but he never speaks about the fact that that's not a peculiar condition, it's actually quite an indigenous condition. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the condition of not novelty, because again, I think we see the novelty, but if that's the alien condition, then I find the alien condition actually to be the preeminent prevailing condition already in the organism that you're parasitizing. By the way, the, I, let me compliment you on what I think to be a very compelling rethinking of, yet again, another rethinking of New York. I mean, these are, I, I don't believe that I'm convinced that the goals that you set are accomplished, but I do believe you accomplish goals that are interesting to see. So. because what you have an opportunity to actually really um, question the urban geometry of that particular site because uh, we take United Nations, which I think is a very interesting situation, similar on the reverse side, where they negated the grid. They decide that there's another situation. Now, you don't have to say I would do the same, but that gives you the opportunity to actually rethink of um, a new context for this particular situation because it is different. New York does not address the the waterfront, really. Uh, the, it has many kind of conditions which I think are interesting. And in, in a way, it became too pastoral. It becomes too much like a, a building in the landscape. And one has to really understand the repercussions of what that means in terms of kind of a planning and what kind of urban life it actually promotes. Because it's not just, you know, it's not about just really placing thing objects in a field. But you have to, what, what it does, it does it do to New York? What is the repercussion of, of this on the city? And although even if you accept the given requirements of a developer, but, but what I think is also missing about New York is that there's, there's always this kind of not equal but somehow com compensation to the city. You say, I take away land from you, but I do something else with it. Hence the incredible kind of conditions of all the lobbies. And that is not, to me, clear, because I think that whatever you do in New York is very important. 
And somehow, I think by homogenizing the whole situation, you have diffused these things. Now that could be an intention, <coughs> but I don't understand what, what is the urban quality of that place as a whole, and what kind of life uh, it's really fundamentally would it have. In the same way, when I put all the skyscrapers on Madison Avenue, they really did not understand the percussion of uh, this mass of people coming on the street. And this is in the same, in, in, in the same way, because it's, it is as if it's another kind of ghetto, you know, which is for uh, maybe recording studios, maybe for offices, but yeah, because there is a kind of, on one hand, a con on context, which is, you know, stretching to the waterfront, but you say you negate the context, but you negate it in a very shy way. You know, it doesn't go <laughs> kind of. I mean, the, the, the project's intention was really to avoid this kind of um, commercial waterfront situation. Where no, I'm not saying it should have McDonald's and things like that, but I'm saying. Yeah, but I mean, a get ghettoization. Well, I mean, the, the contextual zoning uh, was um, meant as a strategy to kind of set up. Um, more or less controlled zones that tie the site back into the context and also activate the site beyond its site <coughs> limits because the whole area around the site is uh, pretty dead and it needs activation. But so conceptually, I think, I think if you say that you, uh, in terms of massing, you start with the city edge and you disintegrate into the water conceptually, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. dissolve, mm -hmm. then I think it would be interesting to show, have shown that uh, architecturally, how does that manifest itself? Does it happen materially? And have it more programmatically, and I think that it could be that could be very interesting that the way it dissolves. But I it, somehow there is you have a, you have said you have a limit of the water and a limit of the edges, but and and it becomes like a repeat where there is no difference because the voids always occur in a sunken plaza, which would have which is I think a shame because it should they should have occurred I think throughout the project in different places because. It, Interpretation of the void could have been an interesting phenomenon in this project. Well, there are two. There's a park is a big void too. Yeah. Well, there's a big park. Well, I know there's a void. There's a street is a void. There's a park which is a void. But I'm talking about kind of a really a programmatic void, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which which is not just kind of, you know, air. Yeah. And I think that if you do, I, mean, I know that one has to always have one give us some set of rules. You can't, you know, you have to have edit these things. But it is for me becomes. Too, on one hand, too homogeneous. On the other hand, in a way, that the difference is only, only in one direction. You know, because you, you there's a diagram where it's low and goes high and drops off. And I think, but I still don't get what is the implication of that on the city. What, what, what you know? I don't, I don't, I don't, don't have the feeling of what it does. You have to say, you know, where where is that? Where is the form of that? Let's say the intellectual parameters are clear. What you never state is why that this is a desirable transformation of the city. And there's two things that are interesting. For example, architects might think that the water should be something which should be turned into an amenity, even though New York has abandoned it. If you've decided not to do that then why does this, not just an interesting intellectual exercise, but an affirmative project for the conditions of New York? Is that, okay? <laughs> is that a reasonable interpretation? Well, I'm interested in that. What I'm saying is that, you know, I think that the difference between a, a landlocked site and a waterfront site is that it's not that one should have a high rise and one should have a low rise. The difference is much greater, you know? And, and New York has ignored its water. I mean, the indigenous relationship between the Manhattan well, and, and New York. There are reasons why on the west side they ignore the water because it was always to do with shipping and to do with. And the they do ignore it on the east side too. Yeah, so they use it as high-rise views. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but that's not my main, my main no, I problem. Uh, I actually had a question. If your um, project was implemented on the site, and uh, you went there, someone else went there, what would be the
the most interesting thing? Let's say, what would be the sort of most interesting perception that one would have of the project? I would say the park. The park? Yeah, the park is the generator. I kind of like the sidewalks floating in the lake. <laughs> I mean, you were because you were saying that before that you get a sense of these different densities happening in the park and then kind of stretching out into the development. But you were—I mean—you were saying that the you wanted to implement the grid as something more than um, I think you said it, it more than a formal device. Yeah, formal right. device where it's where it's clear that the grid is outside and the building is positioned within that limit. But, I mean, you, you showed a number of other things that were gridded that were not buildings. Uh, time schedules, um, different kinds of programming yeah. lists and things like that, right? Those were gridded, and it wasn't clear to me whether those were exactly the same as the buildings or not. No. They're not. I mean, those and, were and contextual I mean, zoning diagrams that had an effect on buildings, but they're right. not the same as buildings. Right. I mean, is that is that the grid being used as more than a yeah, than the a grid formal as, device? A, as, a, as a programmatic grid, as a programmatic <coughs> uh, structuring device that also affects the built environment. Yeah. Because I mean, there's a I don't know. Let me see if I can sort of make a point uh, clearly. In architecture, probably more than almost any other medium, more, I, I should say more than any other art form, uh, there is media. Right? It's not, it, it's especially at this scale, right? It is, it's almost inconceivable as, as something that an individual does. It's not like making a painting. You know, it, it involves a lot of things. So the question of, of the media becomes very important. Um, and one thing I, I think that one thing I think is very interesting is um, plans. Um, if you think though of a literal description of them, which is from the sort of complex phenomenon of the built environment, you just carefully call out x and y dimensions at a certain height above the ground and represent them on a two-dimensional surface, that's not very interesting. Right? It's maybe interesting to, to uh, some type of mathematician. Right? Um, but the amazing thing about plans is that it's also possible to work out the form of architecture and use that then as a medium to construct something. So it, it's actually possible to, to work on it, you know, this, this kind of abstraction. It's not, it's not sitting there with a hammer and nails and, and actually making a building, but you have this thing that's manageable and that you can use to make a future construction. But at the same time, it has, potentially, it has form. Now, in this project, what seems to me the most interesting thing, I mean, you are not, I mean, I think you said, you, you said as much. These are not about the creation of extremely uh, fascinating building shapes. The most complex uh, interactions that happened in the project was, was the programming, I think. The question I have, though, is it, it didn't seem like you developed a way to work on the form of that programming. I'm not sure if I understand what you mean. Form of the programming in terms of what? I mean, the program has physical implications. But it's sort of like that it my, it's sort of like my describing the first description of a plan. You know, I can understand how you described it and you had those charts and things like that, but there isn't a point where you actually take it beyond a kind of diagram of, I, I think they're, they're very interesting and very complete diagrams. I thought, you know, the ones that looked like a kind of Madras print were actually very compelling. But, but there, you know, there, there began
began to be an implication of, of how one shuffled these together. What, what, is, what is the form of how these various pieces of program come together? But I think that the whole issue of, of the form of it uh, was dropped. So I, I mean, I'd be willing to accept that the, the built environment itself plays a relatively minor role uh, in the creative aspect of the project, or it's, it's complementary with, with the, the programming. But I, I think you have to say, you know, where, where, is, that, where is the form of that, that project? I mean, the, the most compelling things you showed, I think, were the, in terms of a, seeing it visually, were the early analyses of, uh, the er analyses you showed early on of Manhattan. I mean, those are actually fascinating. When it shifted to your project, it turned all, all of the kind of particularities of that, because that wasn't just a grid. You see, when you showed those diagrams, it wasn't just Manhattan is not just a grid. You actually, those diagrams had the particularities of the voids and the, the, the breakups and the superblocks, but somehow all of those things got smoothed over into a kind of diagrammatic uniformity in, in the project. You agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you agree. That's what you did. That's what you set out to do. And it's partially a smoothing strategy, also partially um, this digitization into a field. So I think a little bit of both is happening in the project. Um, I, I, I just have a, I think it's very, I, I enjoy the analysis. It would have been useful for you and for us if you had some taken a, a, because it is repetitive, if you had taken a sample and explored it, because it would have en enlightened everybody as to what, what, what are the similarities and differences between all these adjacent fields. Mm -hmm. And because we don't have a grip of that, it remains a grammatic, you know, it remains a diagram, and then you would begin to, uh, you know, not just understand it, but of zooming in on the computer model. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because one thing yeah. is you stay in the same graphic space. I, mean, I should have illustrated details. Just, just, no, you know, really but just, you know, there is, there is, seems to be always a leap between the diagram and a, and a, and a kind of toilet uh, yeah. detail. But I think that what, what one is really looking for is a, a sample of what, what it would be, what it would be like to actually, or either to kind of um, not to declare the differences and the similarities. You know, because I think what is interesting about a project like this is that where are the differences between all these things and where is the similarity, you know? And, and, it, and I think actually that one should explore because I, in Anadol, these rely on the quality of the, of the, of the thesis. What, one of the things, um, in terms of this question of urban naturalism, one of the things that obviously is very important in the project is the reference to the way in which you use landscape, in a sense, or conditions of landscape uh, in the project. And I, I suspect that in the end, the project returns to certain conventions of planning, in a way, as opposed to landscape. I, I, I think that the, the thing that's probably quite interesting in terms of referring to landscape conditions would be that one would not only deal with the relationship between buildings and sites, but also the kinds of spatialities that that interrelationship produces. So one doesn't want to end up with the idea of the, of the, the plan, but actually also dealing with the repercussions of the tension between different conditions. Now, so I think this point about looking at things, it should not be that people are now saying, why didn't you give us a one to 100 then section of how that building hit the ground, but precisely to deal through the understanding of the, the spatialities produced by the project, the, the possibilities of transforming even the programmatic ideas that you start off with at the beginning. Because if we take those things at face value, the actual elements of the program are relatively conventional. I mean, I think that's what this, I mean, this is what, what, what Jeff was beginning to, that in terms of any city now, the kind of cross-section of the, of the programmatic conditions that are produced <coughs> are much, much more complex than anything that we can really devise in terms of our uh, 
you know, projects. I think that's, that's why. So it becomes very important to really discuss the thing or develop the, the, the project in <coughs> terms of its very material condition. Now, by that, I don't mean, again, design the building, but that, that this is the kind of, the, 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 the material condition is precisely the kinds of specialities the thing produces. It's specific qualities that can say that at the interface of the office building and the void that's the playground or something, now there is in fact a third, there is some kind of third space that was not given at the beginning but was in some sense discovered. And I think we're all looking for the things that you have discovered as a result of developing this strategy not to deal in the end to remain at the level of the of the presentation and the and the superimposition of the strategy but to then discover or to find out what things you've discovered through this thing both its positive things as well as its negative things you might discover doing this kind of project that there's a number of decisions that are made that are in fact not necessarily very good but i think one d develops a kind of posture in the presentation of the project where it all becomes positive and i think it would be very good to to discuss it in, in both those mm -hmm. in both those yeah, terms. Yeah. I think also just I'm I'm just saying it because I think you know it's useful to think about these things is that thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Forever you'll be holding the microphone for me. Uh, is it also on the, in terms of kind of strategic uh, thinking about this project is that you you deal with the horizontal, but yet you have the skyscrapers, which I think what you could have done also is in terms of planning deal with the vertical plan as if it was a horizontal, you know, it's like flipping the ground yeah. up. Yeah. Because, you know, you, 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 yeah. we, we live with this impression that all towers are the same. You know, you just take an existing tower and you multiply it 20 times. You know, all our buildings are the same. You, you know what I'm saying? Is that there is no questioning about the given existing type. And I think that if you do a thing like this, you have to really question not every single thing. I'm not saying one has to kind of to go back to the Adam and Eve story, but I think you have to kind of really look at these things because the, one should always say that this is an opportunity to re-question certain given things. And there is a also fundamental difference between the original idea of the skyscraper and the you know, tower block in, the, in Europe, which is not, it's not about a repetitive floor plate. It's about another life which can exist within the space. And that could have been done because that could have been a very also very interesting, how you flip the ground up and what it does there's the skyline and how it interprets the idea of each of these, of these towers. You see what I'm saying? And then it gives you also a programmatic invention within the towers, which, which New York needs, you know, and, and would also allow for different programs to occur within the tower. So there are always things which I think that one should always question as to what, without starting the wheel all over again, but question them. خیلی جالبی است در واقع که شما انتخاب کردیم برای اینکه یک کاری رو در نیویورک بکنید برای اینکه خودش نیویورک به نظر من جالب ترین پدیده است که توی جهان امروز ما داریم عنوان یک منطقه زیستی دو ام آی تینک دی دیت ایز میرون تینکس دیت دی چویس اف دی پروجکت این ترمز اف دوئینگ project in New York is an extremely interesting choice because uh, New York as a city form and as a architecture phenomena is uh, quite uh, particular and unique in the world. یکی در موقع تصور ما رو راجع به بسیار زندگی و برنامه زندگی نیور تغییر داد و اون رو بسیار پیچیده تر و یه شکل دیگری بهش داده There are two important issues about New York City One that uh, New York City as a city form has created a very different spatial idea in the world that is only unique to New York. Uh, and the second one is the um, 
lifestyle, or the or in fact, the the city program, which is also something which is only specific to New York and no other city. Which is, uh, let's say, uh, a program, an urban program, which is quite complex, but also uh, very concentrated. So in terms of uh, rebuilding a part of New York, I think this is an issue which has to uh, take place again as a yet another unique transformation uh, that changes the city program. Uh, therefore, I think that uh, this should be uh, a spatial idea, which would be new, that is to do a new project in New York, should be a spatial idea that will be new to New York, uh, and also new in terms of an urban program also in the context of New York. Therefore, I think this is an extremely interesting subject in urban, in urban design and this, this uh, new project in New York can be uh, an idea which can be very influential in terms of uh, urban design at the world scale. But when I look at this project, uh, I don't see a transformation of New York and I see something which is uh, even less powerful than the present urban context of New York. difficult to translate. Uh, <laughs> Did you understand? He's asking me. Which one was the <coughs> instead of instead of transforming the grid into some new project, what would have happened if you continued the idea of the abstraction of the grid even another stage further to continue with the notion of the grid, but to think about alternative possibilities within the context of the grid. So to abstract the grid even one stage more. Thank you very much. This competition is actually a critique of what's going on in Berlin architecturally and um, urbanistically at this point because uh, as we all know there's a a swing to the right as far as the, um, the conservative um, uh, design uh, standards in Berlin. The competition was only a theoretical um, uh, call for 
a new version of Schinkel's um, Bio Academy. Um, the, the one programmatic element that they actually imposed was that the Bio Academy be a self-sustaining um, institution, non-funded by uh, a German, um, by the German government. So there had to be some programmatical um, additions to sort of um, help fund the, the Bio Academy and, and keep it a sustaining, self-sustaining institution. So this uh, this this proposition um, is an opportunity to sort of reevaluate the architecture school as an isolated institution within the urban environment, making it a, a more integrated, um, not only as a building, but also as, a, as an institution uh, being more involved in the, the urban environment, having more of a, of a presence in Berlin. The, the strategy that we actually worked with was um, making an urban proposal out of a building. So we wanted to set the, the Bio Academy in, uh, into an urban context. So it actually turns into not really a building but an urban strategy to, to have a dispersed program in, in Berlin. The program um, uh, is a series of classrooms, lecture halls, studios, live work environments, exhibitions, galleries, and residences. And we're introducing um, a commercial, a quite a bit of commercial, to um, which the funds of the commercial would help sustain the Bow Academy as an um, independent institution. Um, can we start the slides? Okay. Is this the pointer? Um, the original site of Schinkel's Bau Academy is here, and this is the Place de Republic. Uh, we've actually taken beyond this page, which is this whole site, going all the way to Alexanderplatz. Um, the foreign ministry here has been torn down because it had asbestos, and there, actually there's a controversy now here, which is they may tear down that building because if there's also asbestos, but also um, rebuild this, the, the Schloss in its historical state. Whether our proposal deals with having some kind of element there, which will remain, you'll see in the model, it's going to be, um, it'll remain as it is, whether it's the, the Schloss in the future or whether this, this building stays, um, this is, uh, The former East, East German par Parliament building, which will change, which has an opportunity to change functions, which we are going to take advantage of. Do we? Okay. Uh, this is a close-up of the um, the site, and uh, this was the original plot of uh, the Bau the Academy. This is um, one of the, the the Spree Canal and the Spree River here. An aerial shot. This building has actually been torn down now. This is Marx Engels Platz, and this is the Platz of Republic. The site goes all the way up until this tower here. And um, we see this proposal as um, both a um, a critique of what's actually being proposed in Berlin, which is a, a, a resurrection of the, the urban blocks, as you see in Schinkel's um, original Bau Academy. Uh, the Bau Academy was built in 19, 1831, and uh, the importance of the Bau Academy is that it's a turning point in Schinkel's career, and it's also one of his main, uh, m most important buildings because it's uh, the cornerstone of his replanning of this entire historic area. Um, it's, it was considered to be the, the the most modern building uh, in Berlin at the time. 
because of its construction. Um, it used um, the iron construction used in um, industrial buildings in, in, in Britain. Um, so it was actually a, a prede predecessor to, to modernism. Uh, this is the plan. And um, what's important to, f one of the aspects that we took of this plan was the, the what's most seen in, in Schinkel is the, um, the asymmetrical <laughs> voids and circulation spaces present in his buildings. The, the bow academy is just square. All four sides are the same. Also in the same year, uh, the, the, well, the Bow Academy was actually um, uh, damaged in the war in World War II, and it was demolished in 1961 because it was unrepairable. And in the same year, 1961, um, this is a, a competition plan by uh, Le Corbusier for the rebuilding of, of Berlin, central Berlin. The, 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 the plan was uh, rejected by the committee because of its, um, the height of its towers. Although what was successful about this project was um, it clearly solved all of the circulation and communication networks in Berlin. And um, this, uh, this is uh, a point of departure where we are taking to, um, to reassess the, the urban, um, urban Berlin. Uh, one of the questions that uh, Le Corbusier had to deal with was um, how and whether to reconnect East and West Berlin after the war. So it's a politically loaded um, site, although um, we're using, uh, as I mentioned, um, Corbusier's plan as a point of departure, um, not to, um, we're just taking this and reassessing both the Bow Academy and um, Schinkel, I mean uh, Corbu, uh, um, to create uh, something new. And this is not to sort of embody meaning into the project, not to embody um, the presence of Corbu or the presence of a Bow Academy, but to create a, a third, um, to use them as, um, to use their graphics to create something, a third element. The project is about uh, morphing t two things, and it's about distortion. Uh, this is a model of uh, our proposal, and um, let's see. I will go back to I will go to the to the wall and uh, explain the the process of the boards. The work is about it's about process. Um, and how we got to the urban plan. So I will briefly, yeah. Well, if you could, you could use Turner, you could.